The most trusted name in home security, 2GIG, is proud to introduce the next evolution in smart home security technology with the all-new 2GIG Edge Security and Automation Panel. Welcome to our 2GIG Edge Smart Home Automation Presentation. In this presentation, we're going to talk about your cameras and setting those up, both your IP cameras as well as your Alarm.com cameras, doorbells, your onboard camera, and then we'll go into talking about smart home automation. You can view up to eight live camera feeds on the 2GIG Edge panel and on the remote keypads. The panel and remote keypad also have cameras. These cameras do not count toward the eight live feed camera limit. Compatible cameras are your alarm.com cameras, both the Wi-Fi and hardwired, and then your OnVIF level uh, profile S OnVIF cameras. Your doorbell cameras are also, you have two options, which are the alarm.com video doorbell 770 and the alarm.com slimline doorbell. In order to set up your cameras, you go into the installer toolbox under the camera settings. On your onboard camera settings, you have the ability to select whether the onboard camera will stream to other panels and whether you want to be able to capture images for certain events such as arming, disarming, or alarm, alarm codes or invalid entry of alarm codes. Under the IP camera section is where you would learn in your IP cameras, your OnVIF Profile S cameras. In order to do that, you will enter the camera's login name. And the camera's password. Generally, when you set up your OnVIF cameras, you're going to have you're going to set up the same login name and password for all of your cameras, and they're all going to be connected to the same network that this uh, your edge panel is connected to. So then when you do that, it will reach out to the network that the edge panel is connected to, and it will search for all cameras with that same login name and password and download them and download them here. You'll see them start populating here. You also have specific camera settings by selecting the camera as well. In order to view your alarm.com cameras onto the panel, you're going to set those up on alarm.com first. Completely set up on alarm.com and then stream them to the panel from alarm.com. In order to do that, once you have your camera set up and operational and on alarm, viewable on alarm.com, you'll, you'll go into the video section and go under the settings. In the settings there, you should see an option that says to stream video to security panel screen. You'll select that and then ensure to check the box on the right hand side of each camera that you wish to view onto the edge panel. Once you save that selection, you'll go back to the edge panel and you'll see them start to stream to the panel. It does take a few minutes to uh, stream from alarm.com. Now let's talk about setting up some smart home settings, adding some Z-Wave devices, and talk about some of those scenarios. So really what is home automation? That is the, the ability to control and monitor a various connected devices within the home, such as having your lights, locks, thermostats, uh, being able to have plug-in modules to automate certain lights, lamps, or appliances being able to control your garage door. This inc increases convenience uh, for the customers. We enable such things as an automation based on schedule or actions. Schedules would be such as uh, lights that come on at uh, sunset every day. And then that's all, you know, that's actually 
altered every single day based on when sunset in that area happens and that's all controlled by alarm.com or automation based on actions when I open this door up this certain light comes on um, or opening up a um, walking past a motion detector will turn on a light those are some of the examples uh, of automation based on either schedule or actions and all this is controlled remotely via the uh, alarm.com platform or on their app automation will integrate all of these devices into one app into one platform allowing to be able to set up certain triggers being able to have certain things happen at a certain time of day all this type of thing so we're setting up either uh, a rule where hey this happens all the time or we're setting up scenes where we're able to actually trigger them ourselves from the phone so if we want to set up something like to a lock uh, lockup scene we can lock up at night when we go to bed we just run our lockup scene from the phone say lock up and it you know lock the front door lock the back door uh, turn off the porch light and maybe dim the kitchen light to 20 percent for the evening it's things of that nature or a wake up scene when you get up in the morning just uh, pick up the phone and say wake up scene and maybe turn on some lights music whatever something that they may have set up that they want to do in the morning controlling the devices remotely is very simple you can control them from the panel uh, via cellular Wi-Fi to alarm.com or you can control them from your uh, computers or tablets or you know phones you also can control them through third-party devices such as uh, at Google Home or Amazon Echo you could say you could set up to say uh, Alexa turn on my lights or you know uh, you know you set up to set up those um, voice automated commands through those third-party devices In order to learn in a Z-Wave device, you'll tap the settings icon or press and hold the 2 gig logo for about 3-4 seconds, uh, depending on how fast you count Mississippi's there. Enter in the access code for the installer code, the ba uh, base installer code, and then or your installer code for your company, whichever one is on the panel. And then go to the installer toolbox. enter in the code if you entered in through the um, system settings side you enter in the code again and, and then go into z-wave z-wave settings under z-wave settings you may have to remove the device first so you haven't even plugged it plugged you barely plugged it in or uh, powered it up and straight out of the box and you may at certain times have to remove those devices because if they tested them at the factory and forgot to remove them from that controller at the factory then they'll be still learned into that controller and that's the only one they listen to so you won't be able to learn it in so sometimes uh, it may be beneficial to go ahead and just remove it initially right out of the box and so then once you tap to remove you would just remove it the system starts listening for the device and then when as it's listening you will trigger the device whether it be a, a single click of a certain button uh, a double click triple click there's different modes for pair the pairing exclusion button just um, just check the manufacturer's directions on how to trigger that device once that happens it will get removed it clears out the memory of the device and it shows here now that that's done you can ensure that it is not learned into any other panel no other controller you can just add the device and again just as it's listening trigger the device as you did before same method whether it's specific button or whether it's a double click triple click etc it will now learn in the device 
and it run and then I'll show as it runs through. Now it may stop at a certain point and say to enter in the device's DSK. Hmm, well, what's that? What do you mean? What's going on? Why did it not learn in? Well, what it's looking for is there's a specific code that S2, um, it's an, if it's an S2 device, has a unique DSK pin code. This is Z-Wave's um, specific added uh, feature for them for to prevent hacking. And if a device is S2, it'll indicate on the device, and you should be able to find that S2 uh, DSK. Once you've entered it in, then you'll see your smart home devices added into the system. You can, you'll see that there's no issue here with this one as the manufacturer, uh, the type of Z-Wave device and you have the ability to edit the name. And then you can, if you have a device that is not learned in, is having issues, you can delete the device and start over. You have options on Z-Wave settings under the Smart Home section. After uh, You can view all devices and see all the devices and then their current statuses as well. And you'll they have them color-coded if they have any type of specific communication issue. You can check your network and have it reach out and go see all the uh, devices that are learned into it. You can rediscover the network. So this is something that I say it's you know vital, necessary, essential, and any of those same words uh, for when you are adding the Z-Wave network. You must rediscover that network in order to ensure that the panel truly understands how to communicate to all the devices and who each of these devices can communicate with. This, um, if you are having any type of issues such as slow communication or failure of communication, at times just rediscovering that network will clear up those communication issues and uh, then we will start acting uh, appropriately. Resetting the controller, you do have the ability to reset the controller if you are unable to learn any Z-Wave devices into the panel. Maybe there's an issue with the controller. You can go ahead and reset the controller. Realize if you do this, when there is something else learned into the panel, that that will then uh, reset everything and take everything out. Thank you for joining us on our 2Gig Edge security presentation. Have a wonderful day.